Let me first give all praise and all honor to the God of my ancestors, the God of Africa, the Almighty, Amen Ra. This is your brother Radio One coming back at you again with another video of truth and historical reality. Now the name of this video is No Egyptians in Abu Sir DNA Study. Johannes Krauss is a fraud. But let me first state that no matter how long a foreign race of people been in a land, that does not make them indigenous to the land. I don't care if they've been there for 100,000 years, 10,000 years, it doesn't matter. That does not make them indigenous to the land, and it is wrong to call them indigenous. But let us go to the definition of European American. And it goes on to say, European Americans, also referred to as Euro-Americans, are Americans of European ancestry. This definition makes it very clear that although European Americans have been in America for hundreds of years, their ancestors came from Europe and their origins are European. The same goes for Egypt and Africa. Okay, although foreigners from the Middle East came into Egypt at a certain time, their ancestors came from the Middle East and their origins are Middle Eastern, not African or Egyptian. But let us go to the mastermind behind this whole fake and fraudulent DNA study on ancient Egyptians. Mr. Johannes Krauss himself. Okay. The, the no good lying neo-Nazi racist pseudo geneticist fraud who saw the opportunity to disrespect and dishonor Africa and ancient Africans by falsely labeling foreigners as Egyptians. But today we're going to make him eat his own lies. But let us go to his own words. He says, the new data can't explain why the ancient Egyptians were so tightly aligned with people from the Middle East. Was it the result of migration or were the Stone Age hunter gatherers of Northern Africa genetically similar to those of the Levant? It's too early to tell, Crowd says. But there's a better chance now of getting answers this is the first glimpse of the genetic history of Egypt, he says, but it's really the start. So now we see here, according to Johannes Krauss' own words, he's not even sure about his own DNA study. He's not even sure, was this the result of a migration of foreigners from the Middle East who came into Egypt, or were these indigenous Africans who were related to Middle Easterners. But yet, he came to his own conclusion and deceived the world and declared that these were Egyptians, but not even sure about his own DNA studies. Now, if there's any truth and accuracy to this DNA study, which I doubt, I believe it's all false and made up, but even if there's any truth or accuracy to this DNA study, it is wrong to call these people Egyptians because their DNA is not Egyptian. Their DNA is saying foreign. So why call them Egyptians? But maybe when a more suitable and honest geneticist conduct this DNA study, a more honest geneticist who's not from the racist capital of the world, neo-Nazi Germany, conduct this DNA study, maybe the truth will come out about the racial origins of these mummies. But until then, no Egyptians in this DNA study. Now, this is the problem when you don't have authentic written historical sources to back up your claims. You go to making up conjecture and guesses. Now we know for a fact, thanks to history, how and when the Hyksos, the Assyrians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, and the Arabs came into Egypt. We know how they came into Egypt and we know what date they came into Egypt, thanks to written history. But this DNA study is full of historical inaccuracies. It is full of conjectures. And it is full of errors and it is not factual but let us again go to the very own words of johannes Krauss, and he says 
Some people claim that foreign domination following conquests from Alexander the Great, the Romans, or Syrians has changed the gene pool of ancient Egyptians and made them more Eurasian. What we observe is, however, quite the opposite, says Johannes Krauss. So according to Johannes Krauss, foreign invasions, foreign invasions from the Middle East did not change the gene pool of ancient Egypt. But the problem is the results of Johannes Krause's very own DNA study supports that claim. It supports that foreign domination did change the gene pool of ancient Egypt. And it also supports that foreigners were living in Egypt. But it does not support that these foreigners were Egyptians. And why do I say that it supports foreigners were in Egypt? Because the DNA of these mummies is the same as those very foreigners who Johannes Krauss says did not change the gene pool of ancient Egypt. That's like saying, well, we found the DNA of George Washington in some old American presidents and we found out their DNA was the same as the people of Western Europe. But these were not Western Europeans. They were indigenous Native Americans, although their DNA was the same as the people of Western Europe. Makes no sense at all. Historical inaccuracy at its best. But let us continue and take a look at the chart that displays the DNA samples used in this Abu Sir mummy test. And we see here all, all the samples shown and it shows the date and time that the mummy lived in and it also shows what haplogroup the mummy was. So we see here all these different distinguished haplogroups of these mummies dated to a long period of time. This DNA study is a mess and it makes no sense at all, but let us examine it anyway. And when I did my calculations, I found out that 27 mummies were dated to the Greco-Roman period, 29 mummies were dated to the Achaemenic period, and another 29 mummies were dated to the Third Intermediate period, and four mummies were dated to the New Kingdom period. So 20 something mummies from each time period living in the same region is supposed to determine the racial origins of the entire population of ancient Egypt. Makes no sense at all. But according to this study, the, mum the haplogroups of these mummies were Haplogroups M, U, H, W, T, and R. Those were the haplogroups of these mummies according to this study. Now, all of these haplogroups, according to geneticists, originated in Western Asia. Yes, all of these haplogroups of these mummies, or should I say, the DNA of these mummies originated in Western Asia, according to geneticists. So if the DNA of these mummies originated in Western Asia, then that means the racial origins of these mummies were not Egyptians, but they were Western Asian or Middle Eastern. And therefore, it is wrong to call them Egyptians. And in order for them to be Egyptians, their DNA would have to have originated in Egypt. But it did not. It originated in Western Asia. So therefore, the racial origins of these mummies were not Egyptians, but Western Asian. And Johannes Krauss was dead wrong in calling these mummies Egyptians, according to his DNA study. And when these pseudo-geneticists came to their conclusion, 
that DNA proves Egyptians were Middle Easterners or Egyptians were related to Middle Easterners, their conclusion should have been DNA proves foreigners from the Middle East lived in Egypt. Because if their DNA originated in the Middle East or in Western Asia, then you have to leave out e Egyptian. These are not Egyptians. Because in order for them to be Egyptians, their DNA would have to have originated in Egypt. And being that their DNA originated in Asia, these were Asiatics, not Egyptians. But let us move on. And since they want to talk about sub-Saharan slaves in Islamic Egypt, I want to talk about Asiatic slaves in Black Pharaonic Egypt. So we're going to go to the ancient records of Egypt and meet the ancestors of these foreign mummies with foreign DNA. So let's go to ancient records of Egypt, Annals of Tutmosis III, Syrian tribute, tribute which was brought to the fame of his majesty this year, 322 horses, 522 slaves, male and female. So, and we're going to go to the next record from the ancient records of Egypt, Annals of Tutmosis III, 5th century, B 15th century BCE. List of tribute brought to the souls of his majesty by the chiefs of retinue Canaan in this year. Behold, the chiefs, the, the children of chiefs and their brothers were brought to be in the strongholds of Egypt. List of children of chiefs in this year. 181 slaves, male and female, 188 horses, 40 chariots. So we see here, according to the annals of King Tutmosis III, Asiatic slaves from the Middle East were being brought into Egypt. Okay, these Asiatic slaves were never Egyptians. That's what you have to understand. They were not the same race as the Pharaohs. They came from the Middle East. They were foreigners. And yes, later on, the descendants of these Asiatic slaves living in Egypt adopted Egyptian customs. And some of them may have even had Egyptian coffins. But these were the ancestors of those foreign mummies. And they were never Egyptians. They were foreigners from the Middle East. That is, that is what the record is telling you. It has nothing to do with the founders of Egypt being from the Middle East. No. These foreigners came into Egypt during the New Kingdom. They were brought there as slaves. They were never the founders of Egypt and they were never Egyptians. And that's according to the ancient records of Egypt. And these were the ancestors of those foreign mummies. But we can even go further back, way before the New Kingdom. And we see in the 12th dynasty, from the tomb of Kanum, Kanum Hotep of the 12th dynasty, Here's the image coming up, okay? We see here from this image, a group of Asiatics coming into Egypt and to live in Egypt. And we see here on the top, those are your Asiatics. On the bottom are your Egyptians. Now we see here Asiatics coming into Egypt and the Egyptians making it very clear that these people were not Egyptians. They were foreigners in Egypt. And we can see the difference between the two we see the Asiatics are like a yellowish or light brown color the Egyptians are of a dark reddish brown or mahogany color the Asiatics have beards they have different clothes on Cl clearly distinguishing themselves from the Asiatics so how in the hell this DNA study is supposed to prove that Egyptians were the same as Asiatics makes no sense because the Egyptians are making it very clear that these people were not them they had nothing to do with these people as a matter of fact these people from the Middle East they were the worst enemies of the Egyptians 
the Egypt the Egyptians hated them the most. And we even see them today. Okay? They are these Middle Easterners are a very racist people. Their racism are even worse than white people. They hate Africans, they hate black people. And the Egyptians had, one, had nothing to do with these people. They made that very clear. Okay? And being that the Egyptians were a Nile Valley people who lived along the Nile Valley, their closest kinsmen were the Nubians or Kushites to the south or the southern Nile Valley. That's what you have to understand. Now, even the Indians in India, which is far east of Canaan, the Indians are more related to these people in Western Asia than the Western Asians are to the Egyptians that border them. Yes, the people of Western Asia are more related to the people of India and Iran and Iraq than they are to the Egyptians who live close to them. Why? Because they are all Asiatics. They're not Africans. And the Egyptians, they are more related to the people of Abyssinia or modern day Ethiopia and more related to the people of Punt and Eritrea and Somalia. They are more related to the people of the Horn of Africa than they are to the Canaanites or Palestinians that borders them. Yes. They are more related to them. Why? Because they are Africans and they are a Nile Valley culture people. They are connected by the Nile Valley. They're not Asiatics. They did not come from Asia. And again, the Egyptians made it very clear that these people were foreigners in Egypt. They were never Egyptians. Just as African Americans, we call ourselves Africans in America. White Americans call themselves Europeans in America. Chinese in America. Chinese Americans call themselves Chinese in America. We have no problem calling ourselves blacks or Africans in America. But for some strange reason, when foreigners come into Egypt, they all of a sudden become Egyptians. They're no longer foreigners. So why are these people not calling themselves Arabs in Egypt? They say, well, the Arabs invaded in Egypt, invaded Egypt. But all the people in Egypt today want to call themselves Egyptians. Many of them do not want to identify with their Arab ancestors. They want to play Mr. Fake Faker and call themselves Egyptians knowing good and well they are not. And many of the foreigners in Egypt just came there recently as 50 years ago, 100 years ago, last year. And they still want to identify themselves as Egyptians or descendants of the Pharaohs. And that is wrong. They are not Egyptians. They are foreigners in Egypt. And history proves it. And they need to accept the truth, man up, and deal with it. Stop crybabying about it, about who they are. But last and finally, let us go to this image here. Okay, this is my favorite image. From the Book of Gates, Races of Mankind, from the Tomb of Seti One. Now, this is what they want you to believe, family. Yes, right here, look. They want to exclude out the true Egyptians and replace them with these fake Asiatic Egyptians that never existed. See, we, see, we have here the fake Egyptians, the Asiatics, the Timahu, and the Nubians. And black people, this is why you have to stop calling these people black. You have to stop calling Middle Easterners and Hispanics black. They are not black. And by you calling them black, you're giving them the green light to steal your history. But let us go to the next image. Right here, see, we have the true Egyptians. This is the truth. We have the true Egyptians, the Asiatics, the Timahu, and the Nubians. 
This is the truth right here. This is the truth that they want to hide. But we can't let them take our history. These people want to be us so bad. These are a strange, evil, and racist people. This stuff makes no sense. And I am tired of repeating myself about it. That's why I want to have a person to person a live debate with one of these lying racist pseudo historians or these pseudo scholars so we can get this squared away and I can destroy them with the truth because this is not making any sense I will say with all confidence that this era right here people hear me out this era is the era of pseudo history yes we have more pseudo historians than ever today and it seems that nobody cares about the truth these people are playing around they are playing with your history these races they are a joke they're nothing they are a delusion they're nothing and as long as we have some integrity and stand for the truth we can defeat them they are afraid of us they are running because they know they are a joke and they are playing around with our history and we are fed up with it it's game over for these frauds it's game over and they know it your Caucasian dynastic race theory has been exposed and debunked Your Noah's Flood story, your Caucasian sons of Ham coming into Africa has been debunked. And I'm going to destroy it even more in future videos. The time is near for you people to be honest and tell the truth like it is. And the truth is ancient Egypt was founded by black indigenous Africans who did not come from a foreign land that's what you're gonna have to admit and we're gonna keep exposing your lies until you do so stop beating around the bush because it's game over for you and in conclusion to you mr. Johannes Krauss you have been exposed you have been debunked yes give yourself mr johannes kraus give yourself in a round of applause and smack yourself in the face 10 times for dishonoring africa for lying about history and for trying to whitewash the egyptians yes your whitewashing failed it failed you tried but you failed it didn't work we figured you out you lied and smack yourself in the face for screwing up history lying about real history and making up your own pseudo history we're not buying it you have been busted and if you have any honor in you you will come out and address this topic and admit to your wrongs and falsehoods because you are nobody i don't care how many degrees you got i don't care what university or what max planck institute that you come from you are human just like everybody else and you are a liar you are a dishonest person you're nothing you as low as they come mr. Johannes Krause you can wipe that smile off your face you can try to look as nice as all you want you're nothing we figured you out you're a lying deceiving slick racist snake that's what you are so we see here that this DNA study 
the mummies in this DNA study were not Egyptians. And if anybody come up to you, people, hear me out. If anybody come up to you saying that DNA proves that the Egyptians were not black and were Middle Easterners, you tell them no. Your DNA proves that foreigners from the Middle East invaded Egypt, lived in Egypt. But it does not prove that the Egyptians were foreigners from the Middle East. The Egyptians were black. Herodotus, book 2, chapter 104. The Egyptians were black. Nothing else. And with that said, this is your brother Radio 1 signing off. And until next time, Egypt stays in Africa. Peace and Amen Ra.